Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome back to another one of our comparison reviews. We've of course got Gregorio with us. Hello. And we've got a couple of little screamers. We've got a couple of little super sport screamers. I've got the new Honda CBR 600 RR. A bike which disappeared. Well, it's disappeared for longer. This is about three years, three or four, three years, or four years, I think years, this has think. been gone yeah. for. Yeah. Still available globally, but not yeah. available in Europe. Well, the 2024 she's back and looking better than ever. What have you got there, Greg? This is the 2024 Kawasaki ZX6R. So this is a 636, uh, straight four, bit of a screamer. Absolutely lovely. Both it's been, screamers. Yes, both screamers. Both screamers. Had a bit of a facelift as well, so it's got new fairing, looks slightly different, but yeah, yeah. so uh, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. So I know these may not be sort of your mainstream bike no. these days. They're and overlooked, they're overlooked. I think sort of the parallel twin thing has sort of taken yeah. over, hasn't it? And I think, which is fair enough, and they're good bikes, but these are surprisingly these are interesting. Proper, proper little screamers. So uh, that sounds of interest, you know what you've got to do? Grab well, yourself a cup of tea and chop see. So here we are. Here are the machines. They're, they're fantastic, mate, these little babies, aren't they? We've both been thrashing these around for the last week or so. Greg's only ridden the ZX6. I, I've been riding mainly the, the Honda. Um, you're loving, you're absolutely loving this, that, aren't you? It is really good. It's it's perfect, John. Honestly, there's nothing. It's so smooth, so refined. It's plenty quick enough. You know, it feels a bit flat when you first ride it compared to a bigger bike, but then after a few minutes, you just recalibrate your mind and it's been absolutely brilliant. This is exactly the same. I, I've I've even been looking how much these on the website going through the configurator. <laughs> I've, I've absolutely loved this. I, I've absolutely, it's incredible. 10,400 10, pounds, which is MT09 money. And I'm not being funny. This is a proper, there's, there's, there's no sort of anyone this week can think they've sort of skimped, you know, they're, they're just, it's, it's unbelievable, it's unbelievable. I mean, people say the super sports are dead, don't they? Both these bikes have been resurrected from the grave as well, haven't they, by the matter. Both these bikes have disappeared. Well, but have, did they disappear globally, though, or just in Europe? Okay. I think they couldn't make, yeah, Euro 5 was the issue, so they couldn't make Euro 5. They got there eventually, and thank the Lord they did. What, what's been so amazing on these bikes is just the... The feedback and the sort of the thrills you get from riding them is unbelievable, isn't it? Because you're, you're working the motors. Yeah, they're a little, they're, they're a little bit peaky, but they do have a use, enough usable torque, though, don't they? Yeah, and that's the thing. It's, they're so engaging straight away because they're a little bit revvy. You can get on the power quite hard. It's just fun. Yeah, fun's the word. And you know, the suspension's decent. All fully adjustable suspension. None, none of this sort of non-adjustable suspension that you get on your sort of your parallel twin sports bikes. So these are, these are proper little super sports. And I'm, I'm really even are. finding that the riding position on the CBR, okay, I don't feel cramped on it. It's, it's, I'm the same. it's, it's really good. I can't, I can't believe I'm saying it. And I can't believe how surprised I was at, at this machine. <laughs> Before we started testing these bikes, I thought these are just track bikes. People buy these to go on track, they're not really suitable for the road. But I couldn't have been more wrong with how much I've been enjoying this on the road. So much fun. I completely agree that they actually make fantastic road bikes for fun. You know, not if you want to do big distance, they're too revvy, but if you just want a toy and uh, like 10 out of 10 engagement the moment you ride off, it's right here. And this, I mean, the Kawasaki, I've not ridden the Honda yet, it's so. It's so smooth and so easy to ride. Even when you're around town, it, the engine's so flexible. It's absolutely a delight, to be honest. Yeah, the, the Honda's just the same. Uh, my, my feeling is the Honda could be a little bit weaker in the mid-range than what the, the Kawasaki's gonna be, but we'll see. We'll see when we jump on it. I think it'll be marginal. It'll be marginal, but obviously this has got a few more cubes, hasn't it? So it's gonna, it's gonna help out. Yeah, that's a 636. This is a 599cc, so there's a little bit more capacity on the Kawasaki. Yeah. And what, what I love about it is so smooth. It's like typical Honda this. I was expecting a very sort of raw bike, but track but a very raw, but it's super it's silky refined, engine. So refined, so refined. And that I think was one of the biggest surprises. 
of course you've got all the electronics now, you've got the TFT, you've got the six axis IMU, you've got a quick shifter and blipper on this, the, the blipper on this is amazing. Yeah, no, uh, no, no blipper on the Kawasaki because it's cable throttle. So you've got a, a quick shifter which is, is so smooth, it's perfect at any speed. But obviously it's, uh, it's manual affair down the box and actually the clutch action and the throttle response is so nice. I've actually been totally happy with it. It wouldn't put me off. Honda have done a great job on the blipper on this. And of course, as part of the changes for this bike, they've made it fully sort of ride by wire. So they've put a blipper on it. It's got the quick shifter, which is really smooth. And with the engine note of this machine, it, when you go down the box on the blipper, it is so racy sounding. And that's what makes you want to go fast. Just the noises this thing makes. <laughs> I love it. Ten and a half thousand pounds. I mean, it's another what couple of couple of grand more than your sort of pretend parallel twin sports bikes. Power. We've always said it. Middleweight bikes are great fun on the road because you can actually utilise all of that power and use all of that power. And this is a prime example of it, isn't it? Woo. The brakes give lovely progressive feel on the Honda. Everything is just just work really easy. It's just really easy to ride. Yeah, surprisingly pleasant being out on these and I, they're, they're very comfortable i'm surprised i think you've you you need to come from a sports bike background but if you're used to this riding position i, I find it comfortable you're sort of well away from the elements the fairing on this bike's really good as well so when you're sort of doing 60 mile an hour you feel really quite cocooned it's uh, it's enjoyable and on the honda what they've done they've sort of gone for that modern approach of having sort of wide bars and pushing them forward a little bit I mean, I'm six foot two, I think you're six foot one, Greg, aren't you? And I don't feel cramped on this bike. I mean, I may look ridiculous on it. I'm not saying the bike looks tiny underneath of me, but I can ride it. The leg position's not too extreme. The bars feel nice. I don't feel too hunched over. I could certainly put up with this. I think it's at least as comfortable as my KHGSXR. I think it's at least as comfortable as that. You say you think you look ridiculous on that? Yeah, I think I must. I must do. Let me, let is it, is let, it, let me have a is look. Is it a CBR 600? Oh, sorry, I'd, I'd assumed you were on a Grom up until you said that. The other things are hanging on the ground. <laughs> Let's have our first little swapsicle. Don't forget, there's no blipper on the Kawasaki, yeah. and I don't want you wrecking the gearbox. <laughs> Not on your baby. No, exactly. I'm in love. On, on the Honda, you do get the indicators on all the time, I which I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. That's about the no. only criticism I've got is yeah. the indicators well, staying on. I think, on. to be honest with you, they need to go completely. Go completely? Uh, yeah, if, yeah. I, if I owned it, you'd want maybe those, you know those nice bar oh, end yeah, ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they, they sort of stick, they look a bit silly. Because yeah, you've got a nice wing, they're, they're so it looks like... Space, just, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. It's I a shame they're not in the mirrors. Because where are they on the Kawasaki? Oh, it's built integrated into the into the fairing, isn't it? Yeah, it does feel quite different, the riding position. Just the whole thing feels different. It reminds me of the of the blade where you're almost looking over the windscreen a little bit, whereas the Kawasaki, you're sat, it feels like a bigger bike. Oh yeah, it seems higher at the front, doesn't it? The bar seems closer to you on this. Leg position feels similar. Oh, I fancy this is slightly more comfortable again, actually. I think the Honda's got more of an induction roar, straight away I'd say that. Yeah, and there's definitely a little bit more grunt, I think, on the Kawasaki at the bottom. A little bit more grunt. Oh, it's going to be it's going to be hard to choose. Yeah, this is very nice as well, actually. <laughs> the Kawasaki's good, isn't it? This is very nice. Yeah, the blip at the quick shifter works well, doesn't it? Yeah, it's really, yeah, it's perfect, isn't it? Really smooth. I mean, yeah, a blipper obviously is nice, so that is a, a clear advantage with the Honda. And I think if you if you did have one of these and you were doing fairly regular track days as well, it's nice to have the blipper, isn't it? Yeah, the blipper's lovely on track. It's, it's one less thing to think about, isn't it, if you're on track and you've got a blipper. Yeah, I think the Kawasaki's got a little bit more in the middle, but it's... it's it's not enough to worry about, is it? It's not no, enough to worry not. about, I don't think. I think as well, already I'm a closed throttle to just on the gas. This has got a little bit of a lunge. I think the fueling's slightly nicer from a closed throttle on the Kawasaki. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, would, I would agree with that. I also think the front brake on that Kawasaki, again, this is direct comparison, I think it feels slightly nicer. Yeah, it's, it's sharper, isn't it? it, it yeah. It's, yeah, I would agree, I would agree. The, 
Yeah, it does feel nice with the front brake. You're right, there's a, there's a lot of power there straight away. Yeah. It's a little bit more progressive on the Honda. But it's a very, very close call. And I think, um, I think a big part of it is going to be, because they are very, very similar, the riding position is very similar. You, you sat a bit more over the front of this, but I don't think the riding position is massively different. I think it's going to come down to which brand you like and which look. Have a listen to the blipper on that as you bang it down, Greg. It sounds lovely. So, so racy, isn't it? I think the Honda stock sounds nicer than the Kawasaki. Yeah, and this has got the cats has got the uh, sort of road option Acra on it as well. Yeah, but, but there's no there's no volume from it whatsoever, though, is there? It's, it's just for look. Yeah, it's all yeah. induction noise, isn't it? I think the Kawasaki's definitely got a little bit more in the middle, isn't it? Yeah, you've got to really work that. You have to really do have to thrash that. I'm loving the Honda as well, though. It's still very, very good. This is going to be a tough call, I think, this one. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely, I think, ride the Kawasaki in a slightly higher gear and use the torque, the mid-range torque, a little bit more. You do have to sort of thrash the Honda a bit more, I think. I must remember, use the clutch when changing down. <laughs> Yeah, it's a shame they didn't make this ride by wire. It's a bit of a bit of a shame, I have to say. <laughs> so good! Greg's even brought his knee sliders out to play. I do think the Kawasaki feels a bit quicker. Um, did you agree? It, I think it's 120 horsepower or 122 horsepower and that's 119 so it is slightly but it is a bit lighter the Honda this is I think another five or six kilos heavier but on that basis then you'd think that they'd feel identical but I do think the Kawasaki I know it's got a few more cubes but not a lot I'm wondering whether um whether it's down to gearing it could be it's, it does seem quite high geared that Honda actually you, first gear seems like 70 miles an hour first gear which for 600 is, is quite a lot, isn't it? And Honda are sort of, they always tend to do that. They overgear their bikes a little bit, don't they? Electro I fancy the electronics on the Honda could be a little bit more sophisticated because you can isolate wheelie control and traction control on the Honda. I don't think you can on the Kawasaki. I think it's just traction control. But it doesn't mean I necessarily prefer it. I think, I actually think that they're surprisingly close and um, if, you, if you had either of these, you'd be very happy with either of them, I think. Um, so yeah, it, it, it is gonna come down to personal preference on the look and the brand and everything else. I, I, this is, they're so impressive, that's, that's the thing. And as road bikes, I'm with you, I'd have thought, oh no, it's just, you're better off having loads of grunt on the road for overtakes, but you can, you can ride these really easily and they're, they're very flexible, the engines, aren't they? I know, I mean, I'm doing 30 miles an hour now, I, I think. <laughs> and yeah. they're so nice and you know straight yeah. falls are always like that aren't they but they're yep. so manageable in town you know they're, they're, oh, they're just so good let's give it a bit of thrash bit of thrash these bikes love to be spanked if there's ever a bike that loved to be spanked it was these two i totally agree you do also have a fuel gauge on the kawasaki and you don't have a fuel gauge on the honda so that's one thing the Honda is missing, a fuel gauge. You've got a, you've got a range to empty and a fuel gauge on the Kawasaki. It's only a small thing, but definitely worth a mention. you just got so much confidence to sort of go quick on them, haven't you? I know. Yeah, I'm missing the blipper. I am missing the blipper, to be honest. That's because you're lazy, boy. <laughs> when you get a bit sporty. <laughs> oh, look at this. Bliss. Every slip road becomes a racetrack when you've got one of these. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, the Honda sounds so racy though. It sounds so racy, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. It had an open pipe on as well. Bloody yeah, hell, it's so how engaging. Cool it sound. I know. It sounds sort of angry, doesn't it? It sounds angry. And you're up and down on the blipper, it just, it's just it sounds awesome. Let's pull over here and we'll, we'll swap back. Because I'm a little bit confused now. <laughs> I thought I was going to say the Honda's brilliant. Are you like that as well? I'm like this, this as well now, yeah. Oh, it does look nice. I've got, wing, got wings on this as well, mate. You've got wings. I know, I like the wings. I, I, I do like... I don't get they do pointless. Nothing. They do nothing, but, but... I think the belly pan on the Kawasaki is a pretty good effort. Yeah. It is a pretty good effort, but it is not as good as the Hondas. The Hon because there's no box there, because the pipe's up high, you've got that beautiful... I think that it looks so, so nice. 
It looks yeah. like the fire blade, doesn't it? That's the thing with it, that. It really does. It looks lovely. Yeah, and I love the tail. I love the little grills into the tail and the the big wide seat and the back end. Back on the Honda. But I think the riding positions are very similar. I think this is. I think the bars on this are slightly lower on the Kawasaki. Um, but you're sat in it more. There's more in front of you on the Kawasaki. Yeah. You're like sat on the Honda a bit more, aren't you, I guess? Yeah, def yeah you are. It feels flatter the whole bike, doesn't it? And you, as you say, you're perched on it. So again, it's not really a pro or con, it's preference then, isn't it? Yeah, well, I don't think there's anything in the riding position really, do you? No. From, a com from a comfort point of view, anyway. Definitely not. I think both are more comfortable than you might think they would be. Yeah. I think that's the point. Oh, blipper. I've got a blipper on this. I do like that blipper. I'll take the slightly snatch your throttle response so I can have the blipper. <laughs> no, and that's totally fair. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I, I'd much prefer to have the blipper on the Kawasaki as well. But it is what it is, and we can't keep going on about it. Well, I don't know. I might do. The mirrors are very good on the Honda. Hey, hang on. Sorry. Wrong channel. <laughs> I know we're not allowed to talk about such things. <laughs> We're ba banned from discussing mirrors. The mirrors are lovely. Shall we? Let's do it. Oh, so nice though. It's nice to move around on the seat on this and hang your leg out. The tank's nice to wrap your legs around. <laughs> the, ha the howl of this bike when you come off the throttle. It's so, so racy sounding. Can we swap him? Yeah, let's do a little swap skis. Yeah, there's definitely a bit more grunt on the Kawasaki. Uh, I agree. Especially uphill, you can notice, you can really notice it on the, on the Honda, especially uphill dragging my weight up. It's quite a bit more grunt, I'd say, isn't there? You can go in a higher gear, you've got to sort of leave it screaming a bit in second on the, on the Honda. Yeah, I fancy the Kawasaki could be a little bit easier to ride fast. Yeah, I think so as well. It seems that it's a bit more stable. It, 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 it changes direction really easily on the Honda. I think it's because you're right over the front wheel. You... It's smoother, the Kawasaki, isn't it? Yeah. It's a little bit more stable, isn't it? So I'm doing right. 40. So ready? Yeah. In three, two, one, go. This is unheard of. This is unheard of. <laughs> oh, it's way quicker, isn't it? Dad, yeah! <laughs> That's the first one I've ever won! <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's definitely... So it, it's got to be gearing. Or, 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 it's, or it's the cube, so... Let, let's, let's, let's get them at the same revs, then. So, 40... If, if fourth gear at 40, I'm doing... Well, when are we doing 40? So I don't know. Hang on, let me, let me, let me get to 40. So I'm now doing 40 at 5,000 in third. Yeah, well, I'm four and a half thousand. So actually, in, four, in, in third, what gear? okay, I'm in fourth gear, yeah. I'm 5,000 in fourth. So okay, that might be a bit fairer then. Right, so I'm now in third, 40 mile an hour. In three, two, one, go. Yeah. <laughs> Corner. How did that fare? So that was you were pulling away a little bit then so much better much better so it could be partly due to gearing and i actually think it clearly is faster the kawasaki when you do that sort of roll on but i think it feels faster as well yeah no i would agree you do, you do think like come on come on come on it's sort of yeah it's all right on the initial throttle opening but it's sort of that mid-range on full throttle, it's a, it's a little bit dead in the middle. Now that, that could just be a Euro 5 thing as well. And then with a pipe and a flash, you get that, get much more of that back again. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a little bit flat in the middle, compared to the Kawasaki anyway. Ridden in isolation, I don't, it's fine. It's still fine, isn't it? Yeah, I agree. Another roll on back there then. So first gear, roll on in three, two, one, Go! Woohoo! Oh, I'm neutral! Oh, back into neutral! Just as I was winning as well! I was winning! He screwed it up! He screwed it up! Do it again, do it again! <laughs> I thought you were going to blow it up! First gear, 
in three, two, one, go! Yeah, Kawasaki's faster, there's no, uh, there's no getting away from that, is there? Kawasaki, even with me on it. Yeah, which is impressive, isn't it, actually? It's like you having a pillion. Alright, let's do it, let's do a swap season. Oh, where's my blipper though? Where's my blipper though? You've got so much speed in hand on the Kawasaki, you don't need a blipper. You've got time, you can take your time on the down changes. <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's have a go on the Honda. I'm going to get annihilated yeah. now. We, 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 we don't it's need to keep doing it. It's almost the point of this exercise. It's, 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 qu it's quicker, it's but official. But we've got to do it, we've got to do it. We've got to do it, but it is quicker. It feels quicker, it is quicker. Yeah, it's impressive that, I have to say. That's the first one I've ever won, I think. That's, I the, think first, that's the first one I've ever won on the full power. Full power, power run. In three, two, one, go. Oh, dear. I thought you weren't getting away that much. No, but I... But, you know, big, I don't think we need to deal with, did you? I don't, yeah, I don't think wheelie control's on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, it is. Unless you've turned it off, you've been using it. No, I think it's off. Yeah, let's put it over here. I think we, we're, we're done anyway with those off. We're done. I did the, I did the whole thing on the back wheel then. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> is it off? I, I don't know how you can tell. I don't know. I don't know, but it's fine. We'll leave it. <laughs> it was just like literally like that. So, <laughs> That's all, it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you still won, <laughs> and you still won. Oh, oh, that was fun. That was fun, wasn't it, eh? Yeah. What brilliant little, I mean, I can't, I can't stress it enough how much fun these bikes are. And for 10,000, well, I think the Honda's a hundred pound cheaper than the Kawasaki. Yeah. But for roughly 10 and a half grand, what incredible bikes. Absolutely so much fun. It's hard to, you know, obviously we like a bit of hoonage and a bit of sporty bikey riding, don't we? So not everyone that watches your channel will be in that no, category. No, no, I agree. But it is kind of hard to criticise them because they're both incredibly refined. They feel really well built. The handling's great. The brakes are great. You've got fully adjustable suspension. They've got more than enough power for the road. I'm with you. It's like if you're thinking of getting one of the parallel twin sports bike replicas i think just take a moment and stop and have a think and maybe try one of these i think you'll be really surprised i think they offer quite a bit more yeah and they're still if you just want to commute on these even you know like because a lot of people get those bikes i guess go to work on it and stuff which is totally fine but you could commute on one of these because they're around town they're so easy to ride the gearboxes are so flexible the engines are so flexible they're actually a pleasure to ride around town way yeah. easier than my yeah. Tuono, yeah. To, be, to be honest yeah 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 you know the Tuono likes to be ridden quite fast you know it's got tall gearing so you know you're you don't get out of second gear really whereas these are easy so yeah really really impressive and uh, and you've got that japanese reliability with them as well yeah exactly Japanese reliability, they're proven platforms, these engines have been around for donkey's years and, that, and, that's, and that's why they're affordable because it's an old design just refreshed a bit and that's why they're £10,500. And I think the Japanese and straight fours, that's their sort of heritage isn't it, over decades and as you say they know how to produce them and that's why they've been able to knock these out at such a good price. I mean it is incredible that they can sell them in today's climate financially for ten and a half grand and make a profit it's, it's 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 really really impressive but the, you know the big question is which one would you buy which one would you have i know, I know the answer to this i think it's not it's not going to be a surprise I, I, i'm i am surprised and uh, so i've obviously done a first ride on the kawasaki and i'd ridden i've ridden the kawasaki more than the honda and i've really really enjoyed having the kawasaki like you know can't wait to get the keys out can't wait to ride it and i've really really enjoyed it but i was really reserved judgment because i thought the honda's going to be amazing and i don't want to jump to any conclusions but actually riding them both back to back i still have a preference for the kawasaki i just think it feels slightly more sorted and rounded in all areas and i think that that extra grunt that it's got and maybe the lower gearing it just makes it slightly easier to ride and I think I prefer the Kawasaki and I'm a little bit surprised. I don't know why I'm surprised, but I 
but I, I do like it. I think there's there's a few little kind of minor niggles maybe on the Honda, whereas I think on the Kawasaki there are none. There, maybe that's a better way of saying it. I, I would agree. I think the Kawasaki feels a bit more of a better rounded bike, doesn't it? Yeah. It's perhaps slightly easier to ride as well. Got a bit more power, like you say, every, everything. Where the big thing with the Honda is it, the Kawasaki has got no blipper, which is a, it, it's a real shame. If they'd put that on there, I think it would have been a no-brainer. It's the Kawasaki, but without the blipper, I think it's you're missing a little bit of that engagement, which is great on the Honda. The Honda sounds better. The induction roll is amazing. It does. The Honda sounds better. I think the Honda looks better. Yeah, the Honda looks better. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you'll, you'll, you'll take the Kawasaki, yeah? You'll take, take the Kawasaki. The Kawasaki. It, yeah, I, I literally could buy a Kawasaki. I'd literally happily hand over my money to buy one of those and I would take the Kawasaki because I think it is faultless and if I bought the Honda I'd be buying the Honda because I think it looks slightly nicer but not because I think it's better uh, yeah yeah I would agree and uh, I might buy the Honda for that reason though I, 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 I might take the Honda and I think you'd get the Honda because I think you'd miss not having the blipper whereas I'm not so worried about that personally and I think for that reason I like that blipper I prefer the look of the Honda I, I like the sound of the Honda and I think you could change the gearing, which would give it a bit more of that grunt back. Well, I think if you uh, change, change the pipe, pipe and maybe got a map on it, yeah, no, that would probably, that be would, that would probably give yeah, it a little bit more anyway, it wouldn't out, it? Yeah. To be honest, yeah, it's a little bit easier to ride the Kawasaki. It's sort of, it's a bit more twitchy feeling, a bit more stable on the Kawasaki. But yeah, but look at it though. So are we offering any decent consumer advice here? Because as always, we've picked different bikes on a comparison. So basically what we're saying is they're both brilliant. You prefer the Honda and I prefer the Kawasaki. Yeah. But we're, I think we're agreed on the point, so the Kawasaki's a little bit more rounded, isn't it? Yes. There's, no, there's really not much to choose between them, is there? I think it's you, you, what you prefer the look of, what you prefer to ride, it, it comes down to that. They're both superb. You can't go wrong with buying either one of them. Absolutely no. amazing. Oh, well, well Thanks for inviting me. No worries, mate. So I hope you enjoyed the video. We will be doing more of these comparisons. We've got the Tracer versus my GX. We've got to do still. We've got the Fireblade versus the R1. So we, we, we've done the middleweight shootout. Now we're now doing we're the R1 versus the Fireblade. We're going full fat. And, and part of that video, we can sort of say if they're worth the extra money, really, over what, yeah, what you'd get by yeah. buying these middleweight super sports. And that's but interesting because these are going to be fresh in our minds. So it really yes. will be a case of is it worth the extra? Exactly. Without, I bet we go, yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. So Forget all that. Forget, Forget that, weights, yeah. You need the extra grunt. But so, no, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe, like, share the video, all that stuff. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. Bye.